Well, hello, fantastic creatures of this universe. Welcome to the Black Metal Alchemist. This is Carlos Odemarque. And today, I want to talk to you in this gloomy, foggy day about fears. I don't think that you are afraid of the right thing. Stick around to understand what I mean. So I have to say that I've been slacking off uh, the Black Metal Alchemist. To be honest, uh, I've been thinking a lot about what to do out of this. And of course, I am not the kind of person that just thinks about, okay, what to do about it, but that is uh, connected to my life purpose. And uh, <laughs> everything becomes a mess when it comes to me thinking about stuff. <clears throat> Fair enough. What I don't want to do is to let this die. All right then, so, so okay, let's go to the forest once again. Let's cover topics that I find important. And let's share it with the world so people understand A, my madness, and the ones that are mad enough as to, oh, Jesus Christ, it's so difficult. So, now I understand why sometimes I'm not very fluent on my speak because there is a lot of ice. And the ones who have been follow the podcast have heard me falling a couple of times. Well, now you have the opportunity to see me in full HD falling. <laughs> all right, let's get serious. First of all, thank you for supporting this channel. Basically, thank you for your attention. I think that... Let's go that way. I think that uh, is not thanked enough to the people who consume any sort of content that your attention is valuable. It is an honor to share this moment of life together. We have been alive together. I've been talking in the forest here and you have been hearing it or seeing it. And that's quite a bit, that's magical. That's, you know, you could be masturbating right now, but you ain't, because yeah. you are cool. You can let that for later. All right. <laughs> okay, so I started saying that you are not afraid of the right things. <laughs> well, first of all, is there something right to be afraid of? Dark, perhaps? Let me elaborate a bit more. Upon thinking about what is it that tends to create insecurities on people. You see, our insecurities, we feel them as if they are unique to us. Because they are, obviously. We are feeling them, they are very real. Depending which mindset you have, might be terrifying. But if you take a bit outside view, it's common. It's, it's so ridiculously common that it, it, I am surprised that we still have them, you know. It's, 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 a, it's as common as hunger is. And 2021, we still are kind of debating into how to <laughs> fix certain things and regarding um, regarding self uh, self esteem and all that crap. All right, an idea came to my mind that I wanted to share with you because there are really there are things that we are afraid of that we are 
I believe, and this is my theory, that we are so afraid of that we don't, we, we don't even want to acknowledge it. It's almost like this, uh, although I've never seen more than a movie or something, this Harry Potter that they have this like bad guy that it cannot be named. Well, something like this. And it seems at this point plausible that one of the reasons that we find so many little things to be afraid of is because <laughs> by being afraid of those things, then we can go into absolute, complete self-denial about the things that are truly fucking scary. And when I'm talking about truly fucking scary, I mean, I'm talking about terror. And even more than death. If that scares you, that's not even the worst. It struck me how obvious it is. And it's so self-evident. It's always there. I think that the most terrifying thing a human being, the most terrifying situation a human being can encounter is to arrive to their elder years, which you will, and I will too. but then have the realization that you have not lived anything. You haven't had the courage to do anything of what you wanted to do, or not much. Or that you didn't have the courage or the self-belief enough as to do something with one of the, of the million ideas you have to improve the world. And that they are gonna die and rot together with your body. That's terrifying. Now, that's for tomorrow. You know, don't worry, come on, don't be just so dramatizing. <laughs> um, think about it. There is people that you might have fuck up that still needs, wants a fucking sorry letter. And they are, that, the idea, you're not going to let go of the idea until you actually do it. Because there is a million ways, there is a million fucking reasons why not to do something, Jesus Christ. But the point is that, you know, that is an undeniable part of the truth. That is an undeniable part of our existence, the human experience. And to not look at it doesn't mean that we are not going to face it. You see, it's like, it's like, um, <laughs> it's like when we were kids. Remember this. Do you remember when you were a kid and you said something like, I will never have a girlfriend or I will never have a boyfriend, you know? And you were taking sides with this uh, sexual identity. Uh, that's disgusting. That's crazy. I will never do that. Look! <laughs> Is there anything else that you are thinking about than, than that? You see, the truth always comes. <laughs> and that is an... That is a behemoth of a truth. That is... I really fuck it up. It's not about failing. <laughs> it's not about anything. It's like, I really fuck it up and now I have tops one decade in front of me. If technology is really advanced. What now? Whose life I'm living? Okay. How many trips to Amsterdam I have not taken? <laughs> Or to the Tibet. How many injustices I have let be. 
I have let happen. How many people I have helped in my mind. Wow. <laughs> With all the, all the crap that you could be doing, all the crap that we could be doing, that we are not doing it because outside it's cold and uh, <clears throat> there is wolves all around us and uh, they're gonna steal our fucking idea and bullshit. Jesus, bullshit. My theory is that if you look at the eyes of that fear, that means you sitting down and reflecting deeply about what that implies. Last week passed much faster than the week before that one. And that's not gonna fucking stop happening. Unless you leave the moment. But you might have already resolved by yourself and by just the laws of your maturity that carpe diem is not a very successful way to do things in this world. There's a lot of ice. When walking is actually difficult. Jesus. I got lost again. Think. I believe that if... I believe that if you acknowledge that fear, that is, you see it, you reflect on it, and you let that fear really take a hold of your soul, of your personality, of you just let yourself be afraid of that for a while. Uh, as far as you are afraid of that, you won't be afraid of the pitiness fears that are holding you back compulsively and constantly and those anxieties they are all based upon we thinking about ourselves all the fucking time stop thinking about yourself so much do something for whatever environment you are at help others or make some sort of even if it's an abstract contribution Accept the fact that a day is going to come when you have only 10 more minutes. And at that day, at least my goal is that at that day, at that moment, I would make the biggest fucking smile of all freaking time. And you can too. Which this reminds me to, um, I'm halfway in a book called The Productivity Project. Ah. And the author had this very strong question. I'm a defender of questions for personal growth. He said, in order to decide what uh, do I have to do, I ask myself, in my deathbed, would I regret to do more or less of that? And that's what he does. This, the, uh, maybe I haven't really expressed the point of why is it so scary. It's because that moment can be so freaking scary because at that point of your life, you, you won't believe your bullshit. All right, you you won't believe it. All the all the theories and all the all the um, all the lies and all the ways that we are telling ourselves that we're great when we are not, and and all the um, all the righteousness and all the narcissism and whatever that goes. There's no point because you just have one more year or you are in your last decade or you are in your last five years. And this is not to say that if you are that uh, of that age, of course, you can go and boom, carpe diem, but you will anyway realize that you have lost almost 
a century of existence, of experience on trying to please everyone or on being in a corner, letting others decide for you because or else you don't have the boss to actually say what you mean, push to who you have to push or help or tell, shut up. You know, many times the best thing to say to somebody is shut the fuck up. You are not right. This is not how things are. You know, and, 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 and other times it's seeing that person and just taking that person by the hand and helping. That's one of the, mo of one of the richest experiences a human being can experience. And still, most people just go home, quiet, look Netflix and dream about how unfair life is that they have been such a, that life has given them such a bad hand. And I've been there, I have, to say, I have to be honest and fuck it, I've been there. I, had, I have had that mentality for so fucking long, you know. But at some point, at some point, in, in, back in Spain, at some point uh, I said, fuck it. I went to Norway and I started a career as Odemark. Cool. I like it. I'm proud of that. It's my personal achievement. What's yours? Have one. <laughs> it's gonna be scary, it's gonna be terrifying because you're gonna have to sacrifice all the shit that you're doing that, that is contributing to that moment of misery in the future. So, upon, upon deciding on things, you could ask yourself, well, is this something that will make me smile at that moment or that would make me regret my fucking existence. <laughs> and let yourself be caught by that fear. Because that fear will be much superior to the fear of asking her out or asking him out or to the fear of standing up to, to your boss and say, Free. <laughs> or, or whatever it is, you have something to do. You have something to do that you are not daring to do. Or else the fucking world would be awesome, much more awesome than it actually is. Which is quite awesome once you learn how to look at it. But you understand what I mean? Neither do I. You see, the, after all, the, the, the ultimate problem with this shit of being a human being some organism that can look upon himself in abs and, and, and abstract the possibilities of a future. That's a lot of responsibility. It's like we are self-aware matter, dude. What the fuck? You have to be able to, to deal with it because the self-awareness is not going anywhere. It doesn't matter if you drink yourself to death. The self-awareness doesn't go anywhere. All right? And, I mean, if not cool, awesome. We'll keep on talking later. But if you are one of those people that are living and experiencing some deep discomfort with existence, it's like for a second, step away and ask yourself in a cold three point of view, looking at yourself, what the fuck is going on? What is so horrible? What, what, is, what is so horrible? Look, emotions are only within us, right? What is it exactly that is making you miserable? Is it anybody in this world that can have some piece of advice about how to stop being that miserable? It's like, boom, boom, wake up. That's why, <laughs> um, that's why Winhof 
started to do all these things. He was all depressed out of his mind. And he understood that discomfort and sacrifice takes the emotional pain away. That's why some people deal with pain with more pain. And that's what I'm saying in this talk, that you can deal with fears with more fears. There is th this fear that I'm talking about, your deathbed fear, your lucid deathbed without bullshit fear. That will make you say yes to every other shit that you, <laughs> you say no to. That will make you do things whether you like it or whether you don't. That will, and this, that, that will show you what courage is. Courage is not that you are not afraid of something. Your courage is that you are afraid of something and you do it any fucking way. You're afraid of the spider and you don't kill it. You take it with a hand like this, you kiss it and you throw it away in a nice, very nice, warm place outside. <laughs> But that's the point. And also there is a, there is a, there is a little point which, which makes it even more terrifying. You see, <laughs> hold on. And this is something that actually happens. This is not elucubration or me here theorizing in the forest. This actually happens once you are in your deathbed you are not afraid of anything. All the fears that you have right now are, won't be there. You have nothing to lose anymore. And it will come a moment in which you have nothing to lose anymore. And in, in that moment, in that moment you will ask yourself, why the fuck didn't I do it anyway? Because all those fears <laughs> are gone. You're going to die, man. Right? And you see that as a, as a fact. You see that all... The same way that once you're afraid of the dark, you switch off. And we were kids, if you were afraid of the dark. Once somebody comes and you switch on the, um, the light and you see the room or see below the bed and everything is okay, the fear just disappears. When once you are watching or seeing or confronting, acknowledging without bullshit, your own death, then where does the social anxiety go? It makes no sense. And that's the mindset that you are gonna, <laughs> that you're gonna look at all your narrative from. So, questions that you can ask yourself. If I wasn't afraid of anything, by the way, not being afraid of anything doesn't mean that you're going to go and throw yourself down the cliff because you still have something called logic, all right? So don't come to me with that in the comments. <laughs> You still know what right and wrong is, and you still know that uh, putting your dick in a meat grinder is not cool. You still have pain. Now, if you wouldn't have that fear, what would you do? And why? Would you do something for the fun? Would you do something for the growth? Would you do what, what? And do that. Because at some point in your life, as I'm saying, you will not have that fear and you will not comprehend why the powerful ver the most powerful version of yourself the one with the more with the most energy the one with the most resilience the one with the most youth didn't actually do it so now i'm far from the forest I hope that you have enjoyed this little thinking trip. 
this was this was Carlos of the Mark. Thank you for having um, shared with me one more episode of the Black Metal Alchemist. And you know, you know, because you know that liking this video, if you have liked it, is very fucking useful to me. Now, only cool people do it. Now really, don't you think it's pathetic, those people that watch a whole video and then they like it and then they don't press the like button and the subscribe? <laughs> those people, Jesus Christ, it's fucking pathetic. But anyway, thank you for liking and subscribing this. Comment down below all the, all the ways that you believe I'm wrong and uh, the ones that you believe I'm right. How did, did this help you and how did this piss you off? Give it to me all and see you soon.